everybody. Welcome back to Zephyr's Travels. I'm Randy. And I'm Diane. And this week we've got something special for you. At the Airstream International Rally in Lebanon, Tennessee, we got together with two other YouTubers. You may already know them, but for those who don't, it's Lauren and Daniel from Wander Local and Rich and Cindy from Love Sub. Yeah, they're, they both have some great YouTube channels, and if you haven't checked them out, do so. We'll put links in the description for their channels. But we got together and talked about what it's like to have a YouTube channel and travel around in your Airstream. So without any further ado, here's that presentation. Okay, so first of all, we'd like to thank, on behalf of all of us, thank you guys for coming out to our presentation and our panel discussion. We know we're competing with the flea market and the uh, yeah. views <laughs> of Airstreaming. So um, first and foremost, thanks for coming. But even more importantly, I know I speak for all three of our channels when we say thanks for watching our videos and thanks for being a part of our community. And thanks for showing the interest to come here today. And, and talk with it. So, um, real quick before we get into the, the stuff, I'm Rich. I'm Cindy. From Love Subbin. Yep. I'm Diane. I'm Randy from uh, Zephyr's Travels. This is Zephyr and Monty, the stars of our channel. Yeah. I feel like the stars of this the stars presentation. Of the... Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm Lauren. And I'm Daniel. And we're Wander Local. Yeah. Okay. All right, so is there anybody here? who's here because they want to start a YouTube channel and they're thinking about doing it or maybe making some videos or maybe... You're out. Okay, Christopher, good, maybe. How about, are you here because you're watching us on YouTube and you want to know a little bit more about what goes into the, like the... Thank you! Awesome. That. We'll go ahead and do that. So the format of today is we're going to go ahead and give a brief introduction to each of our channels and we'll have a little bit of a panel discussion. We've already prepared a few little topics, and then we're going to leave a lot of time at the end for you guys to ask questions. And during that time, you can ask whatever you want. How much money do you make on YouTube? Do you make money on YouTube? The only thing we're asking that you not ask is what we run our tire pressures out on our <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fine. We don't want to start a fight here. Yeah. <laughs> so any question? No tow vehicle questions. No tow vehicle questions. Yes, tow vehicle questions. So other than that, <laughs> anything is out there, <laughs> anything can be talked about. And um, without further ado, I think we can start with our first uh, introductory video here. Cool. So, we're Zephyr's Travels, and we've been doing this YouTube thing for about about three years. Um, we're our kind of, I don't know if we say we're the newer guys on the group, but we're, we're kind of catched up to, you're trying to catch up to these guys. It's kind of a long ways to go over here, but we're working at it. <laughs> um, we, tr we travel half the year or more in our trailer. So we've already done 150 days this year in our trailer. Um, we travel with our two dogs, Monty and Zephyr. And our videos, if you haven't watched them, kind of reflect things we do and like to do when we're traveling. And we try to do things with our dogs. Our dogs love to go hiking. And so we've, we will take them on a hike, especially in a state park where they're allowed, um, and do videos on that. We, do, we travel around to local attractions. We try to find the unique, unique things that are at a certain area. Um, when we went to Tombstone, Arizona, we did the main street, but we also found the memorial to the guy who discovered Tombstone in our video, and people don't normally see that. So we try to do stuff like that. We are also, we have a couple e-bikes, and we like to cycle, and we will do videos on that. We have a kayak that we take with us, and we go out in the kayak. We try to share the good and the bad on our our, our ventures. Um, we have a, a video where our truck was robbed and we shared some tips on what that was like going through that while you're on traveling, you know, 3,000 miles away from your home. Um, we've had another video where Diane hit a car with her bike and <laughs> um, we shared that. We just happened to have it caught it on video, you know. <laughs> And it was funny, I mean, she was all banged up, and we're riding back to the trailer, and she goes, this would make a great video. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we do all sorts of things, and uh, when we run out of travel stuff, then we go into how-to stuff and show you some things that we've learned that we want to pass on to you guys. So hopefully you uh, check out our channel if you haven't done so already, already and uh, I will pass it on to Daniel and Lauren. Yeah. So, we're Lauren and Daniel. Uh, we are, when we moved into our Airstream 10 months ago, we had never stayed the night in an RV in our entire lives. 
So our first series of videos is and just we, our... Of course, as expected, we absolutely crushed every challenge that we met, of course, right? No. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we made no mistakes at all. Like, literally, right out of the gate, we just absolutely crushed it. That's beyond not true. Um, I think in the first, like, 90 days, we broke our awning. Uh, we cracked a tail light. Dented yeah. the fender of a truck. Yeah. I almost electrocuted myself. Yeah, uh, the, the stove thing it's like exploded in my face, almost lost an eyebrow. So the good, news, <laughs> the good news was that we started a YouTube channel and people like you guys taught us how to live in our RV. Um, and so we, of course, share our travels and journeys. Um, like you said, the good and the bad, a little bit of the crazy, or a lot of it. So that is us. We are Wander Local, and I will hand the mic over now to the couple who probably saved our butts more than anybody, Bridge and Thank you. And, um, you know, we've been doing this for 19 years now, so kind of the focus of our channel is, A, a lot of how-to videos, which seem to do really well because, right. uh, you know, of the experiences that we've had. We also like to do a lot of... Cook. Yeah, the cooking and the food reviews, those are a lot of fun. We just basically do things that we enjoy doing, like exploring and finding Americana. And and I think that's one of the things when you think about YouTube, that I, the best piece of advice I ever heard from a YouTuber was to film what you enjoy doing. If you're doing it just to make to get the subscriptions or the subscribes, and I think all of us, if you've heard what they're talking about, we, we film what we enjoy doing. And, with Cindy, it's cooking. Right. And I think it shows in your video, too, if you're enjoying what you're doing on camera. Right. We, we've seen some videos where we're like, man, those people don't look like they're having a lot of fun doing this. Why are they doing this? <laughs> and so um, that's kind of our focus is just to film what we love. Look at Barb. I'm going to ask this question. Explain your T-shirt, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Got checklists? Yeah. So, um, so if you've ever watched our channel, um, one of the things that, based upon our experience, is that we have checklists for everything that we do. And if ever you see me hook up or unhitch or go into a campground, you, I have my checklists around my neck. They're done upside down so that I can read them. And they're available for downloading at our website. So if you want to check that out, at lovesubbing.com checklist. Yep. And I have to give a shout out to Cindy's mom and dad over there yep. who, they developed the checklist. They, they full time for eight years in the 1988 25-foot Excella, and they were actually air streamers for 25 years, went to a number of internationals, and they're kind of living the life right now, and we're glad to be able to bring them a part of uh, this wonderful international here in Lebanon. So I think what we've done here is we've got a couple of <coughs> focus questions, and we'll do a few, three of those, so we'll start with you guys. So one of the most common questions that we get asked about is how do you actually create a video? What goes on behind the scenes? Do you make big plans? Do you just pick up a camera and start shooting? And so we had some conversations about it and honestly it's just really, really different for every single person who you watch on YouTube. But for us, for Daniel and I, if you've watched any of our videos, you all know we're not particularly planners to start. So most of what we do is we just decide, okay, even if there was not going to be a camera around, what do we want to do in the place that we're at? And so we plan that and then just bring along some cameras and see how it goes. Um, so that being said, there are tons of camera angles that it takes to create one of these videos. Um, so I'll let Daniel talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so first off, my first obsession was Rich's Checklist because it cost me more money than probably anything on earth because I ended up buying more gadgets and stuff and tools. <laughs> so I just want to like warn you if you're looking at some of the tools things, it's good, you know, just set aside a budget for that. Um, <laughs> secondly, when it comes to the videography equipment, um, we've got a bunch. Uh, we started with just a handful of small things like one GoPro. Now we've gone to like two of those. We went from like one mount like this that we would use for pretty much everything to like, we use this one. I clamp this on the side view mirror looking backwards. If you've seen any of our videos, this one is actually on the roof of our truck while we're driving down the highway 80 miles an hour. Also a very cool shot. It has three suction cups, right? Uh, it, when one just isn't enough, you need three, right? So like three will keep it there even going. 70 miles an hour would never go faster than that. Just want to clear that up. <laughs> never been over 70. Um, I've got a head mount here as well, 
We recently just stayed in an underground missile base that was converted to an Airbnb, and they let us climb a five-story ladder out of the escape hatch, and I wore this on my head for that shot. So that's one that's coming up soon, but that was also very, very crazy. So again, my obsession is now mounts. I want to mount it pretty much everywhere these days so I can get different camera angles. Um, this is our little uh, bird in the sky here. This is our drone. Oh, just turned it on by accident, but this is our drone. So you, this is, you've not seen me fly. I've flown like a couple of times. There's a lot of drones here at the International. They're not all mine. There's a lot of people flying. This is ours. <laughs> I've got the blue wings, the chicken with the blue wings. So if you see that, that's me. But besides that, that's somebody else flying. Here are the two GoPros. Here's our, here's our workhorse. Yeah, this is an audio mic here. It's called a dead cat to knock out the wind noise. Um, when you watch a lot of YouTube channels, you'll kind of hear like the that's the wind, right? So that we have this like little dead cat. We all do. You can see it over there on their cameras as well. Um, so there's lots of little tips and tricks that we sort of learn along the way. We don't necessarily know. We're not like innately videographers out of the gate, right? We just like pick up a camera and all of a sudden we're just amazing videographers. It's something that we've learned. Yeah. If you look at our first videos, there are probably shots where I'm like filming Lauren's back and I look at it today and I'm like, that's a terrible camera angle, you know? But you don't realize these things. You kind of like learn and evolve as you go. And that's sort of how we, well, that's our lesson in life, really. You just learn as you go. Learn some, a little bit of something every single day and just focus on getting better and improving and being better today than you were yesterday about absolutely everything in life. Yep. So then after we actually shoot a video, then comes the really hard work. Because since we just shoot as we go, yeah. then, you know, it, you're just seeing what our normal day-to-day -day life looks like. We're just talking to, the talking to you guys through the camera as part of it, too. So editing is one of the biggest beasts of having a YouTube channel. So how we handle that is I actually use a Adobe tool called Premiere and I cut up all of the different shots and add voiceovers in it and kind of tell the story. And then we have a videographer on staff because our big kid jobs is we own an ad agency. Um, and he actually makes the, adds the music to it and makes it look fancy and really professional. So um, it's a little bit different for every YouTuber, but that's kind of a high level of how we create a YouTube video. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. You do this because you like the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> that's the real reason. <laughs> you look for a reason to buy stuff. Right? Yeah, I mean, for me, I actually worked for Eastman Kodak for 30 years, and I love cameras. And so it's an excuse to buy a camera. It's what it comes out to be. Uh, but, and you're also right about the editing. I mean, we do our own editing, and a typical video for us, just editing time is at least eight hours. If it's yep. elaborate, it's more than that. And my focus is to, you know, get all the clips t together and then pare it down to something that's 15 to 20 minutes so that it moves along quickly. And that takes me at least eight hours, and I usually break it up over two days because it, it helps to walk away from it after a while and come back. Uh, yeah. And then there's the, yeah. I almost want to call it the business side of your videos because once you've got your video ready to go yeah. up onto YouTube, now you've got to do something to make pe pe sure people see it. And so we've had to put keywords in to kind of draw people to your video. You, you don't use the same ones every time because every video is different and you may get another viewer off of a different video. So you, you're going to put keywords on it. You've got to make a thumbnail that, that's the first thing someone sees. It's got to grab your attention and, and draw you in real quickly so that you watch the video. There's a lot of work to that. And for us, that's another couple hours sometimes when you do your upload, by the time you upload it, especially if you're doing it when, in your trailer and you have got nothing but your cell phone for Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know, a lot of times those are overnight uploads. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's kind of what, you know, for our end, that's what it's like. And like these guys... We don't plan out our videos. Um, we take the camera and we shoot what we're doing. And then a lot of times we will come back afterwards, put the camera on something, and stand and talk and tell you what we did to kind of build the story. Because the story is really key to this whole thing. You want to have something that draws all these video clips. And that's something we learned the hard way. We used to just throw a whole bunch of video clips up there and nobody watched them. Our family wouldn't even watch them. <laughs> So we put, you know, you learn to put the story, and you, and you tell the story all the way through. And, and if something happens, you tell them, you tell the people about it, and, and you, you tell them what you learned. Yeah, that kind of is how we do it. So I'll pass over to Rich. <laughs> that's the worst part for us in turning out a video is finding a place to upload it because we don't have our, our rig is not set up for uploading in the trailer. So we spend Monday afternoons trying to find a McDonald's because that's the fastest yeah. Wi-Fi we found. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
But just to, we're building on basically the same stuff. Um, yeah, and Cindy does all the thumbnails and music. Right, we put the music in last because we sort of want to see what the story is telling, yeah. and then mm -hmm. we look for we use academic sound, which is copy free, copyright free music. Right, and we just sort of look to see what song, you know, embraces the story that we're going to tell. Yep, and th and that's the whole thing about it, is it's every video. I, I did an internship with Disney, and Disney was fanatical about every one of their attractions being a story from beginning to end. And so I've taken that, and every one of our I try to tell a story from beginning to end. Okay, so this <laughs> one is ours real quick, and I'll talk about how do we decide on what videos we create. And because we do a lot of how tos, actually one of the things that I use big time is Airstreamatics. Who's a, who, on Facebook. Who does Airstreamatics on Facebook, yeah. right? Awesome. Right, so for a great example of that was I was watching a lot of threads about people who rolled up their little awning. Their um, little awning tie little, string. The zippy tie thing. They yeah. would roll it up in the tube and they'd be like, now what do I do? Right. You know, and so we did a whole zippy awning thing. Right. A lot of questions were coming about how do you wash, how do I wash my new Airstream? Mm -hmm. Bingo. We did one on Walburnizing, how we wash our Airstream and stuff like that. So. A lot of our stuff comes right from Airstream Addicts and our how-tos. Yeah. How do you do your cooking ones? Well, I, I cook what I like, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so my favorite cooking video is my pizza video. And I was just looking for a way to make a pizza dough that was less messy and then didn't use a lot of gray water when you were cleaning up because dough just gets everywhere and flour gets everywhere as well. So. That's sort of the origin of my pizza recipe, so I was just developing a recipe that would work in the Airstream. Right. And then, like I say, we make videos that we like watching ourselves. So one question is, do you ever go back and watch your own videos? Our how-to videos, we never go back and watch them. We make them, they go out there, and they perform actually the best for us. Those are our best yeah. performing videos. But our regular travel videos, it's like a picture scrapbook for us. We always go back and watch those when we're looking for yeah. just a memory. You know, wow, that was a... Our South of the Border one is one of our favorite videos to watch. We go yep. back and watch that one all the time just because it's so much fun. So we do go back and watch our videos because it's like a scrapbook for us. Right. Yeah, I, I can agree with what Rich is saying. For us, it's, it's our way of creating memories. You know, we do this just for us for the most part because if we're going to talk about the financial part of it, we're not making any money. I'm not even paying for the cameras. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, but we, we do it for us. We, we, it, does two things. One, it gives us memories of what we've done, but the other part, and it's probably even more important for us, is it gets us out of the trailer. We go someplace, we, we, we sit down there, and we think, well, we got to make a video. We got to get out of here and do something. We got to find something interesting in this place. And a lot of times, if we didn't have this YouTube channel, we'd probably be hanging out in the trailer and, you know, read a book or something. So, I mean, it's, it gets us out and doing things. That's one of the things I like about it. I would agree with that exactly. Do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> Not really. I mean, I think the only thing that I would do probably to occasionally I will see something pop up on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook that just looks absolutely ridiculous. And I'm like, we should probably deviate to go do that crazy thing. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> like, let's sling ourselves off of the top of a building on a, on a cable. That sounds like fun. So we're going to deviate that direction and we'll probably like change course to go there to do that silly thing. So that's probably part of it. It's <laughs> real. Yeah. All right, and then the <laughs> last more. question before we go into Q&A is for you, sir. So I want to tell you guys about a video that surprised us. So we were in St. George, Utah. We actually, this past winter, because of the way things were, we weren't quite sure what we wanted to do for the winter, but we didn't want to stay home. And so we decided we were going to try going someplace and staying at, at that place for a little while. So we booked a campsite in, in just outside of St. George, actually 14 miles from Zion. We, we stayed two months, and so it was awesome. We went there, we, we like had Zion for our own backyard. We could go there every week and hike, and we did all the hikes. Um, but we decided one day, on Saturday, to ride into St. George and kind of tour St. George. We want to go to the Mormon temple, and we met a real nice elder who explained everything about the Norman, no, Norman, uh, Mormon religion to us, and you know, it was a real great experience. And then we, just, we had the dogs with us, and we wanted to find a park. And, we went, and I had seen some parks in the area that I thought was worth checking out. So we go into this one. It's extremely crowded. We find a spot to park the truck. We're going to take the dogs for just a quick walk, you know, 20 minutes, 40 minutes maybe. Diane leaves her purse on the floor in the truck. We come back. We have two smashed windows. Her purse is gone. Well, there's a video here. <laughs> come on. You know? Not the camera. 
Um, so we, we didn't film our reactions there so much, but we did, took a couple pictures and then we kind of got over that and the whole experience and then we got back to our trailer and we made a video about it. Well, I posted it up and I made a thumbnail on it and it, it's a little clickbait um, and a clickbait is something that if you put something in your thumbnail that um, draws you in that may not be entirely true, um, that's clickbait. This was, a, I'd say this was a little bit clickbait because I put in the thumbnail, we were robbed. Now I got completely corrected multiple times in the comments that we weren't robbed, we were burglarized. I agree, we were. But you didn't click on that if it said burglarized, you clicked on it because it said we were robbed. <laughs> I posted that video, uh, we, we upload our videos on Wednesdays, or posted on Wednesday, so I uploaded it the night before, and at that time I was doing an 8 a.m. East Coast time uh, to go live. So we're out in the you know mountain time zone, and so it's two hours later, we get up, and I look, I always get up and look at my videos, see what, how they're doing in the morning, and I got like 2,000 views, and that's insane for our videos. And I'm thinking, okay, I think something's going on here, Diane. <laughs> and, and so we, we kept watching it that day, and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And we were right at that growth point of subscribers where a big number for YouTube videos starting out is 1,000 subscribers because that, you hit that point, you can monetize your um, videos. We were nine, maybe just about 900 subscribers. In a couple of days, we grew another 100 subscribers, and that, that's phenomenal for us, and, and continue to keep growing it over the week. And we hit that 1,000 subscribers, but at that time we had already had 25,000 views on the video. That video now has 54,000 or 55,000 views, which is huge. It's, it, it, to us, it's a viral video. Um, we had probably 300 or more comments, continued to get comments for weeks afterwards on that video. A lot of people watched it, a lot of people subscribed to our channel. Hopefully a lot of them continued to follow us and, and enjoyed our channel for the other stuff we do and not just hoping we're having another disaster. <laughs> but it, it was really, to us, it just totally surprised us. And I think everybody here has a, a viral video story that, that kicked them off. And, you know, that was ours. And we, you know, it's, we always, now we're like, how we duplicate? Like I said, the, you know, the bike crash. This could be another viral video. Let's, <laughs> let's get it up there. Yeah, but it wasn't. Uh, but it wasn't. But we, we kind of followed the same format. You know, our, our format for that video was, you know, hey, this happened to us. This is how we dealt with it. This is how we're going to deal with it in the future, how we're going to try to prevent that. And we tried to pass on some tips. And the same thing with the bike crash. This is what we think happened. This is what happened to Diane. This is what we think happened. And what are we going to do different to prevent that and make sure that we're safe? Wear helmets, you know, which we did. We, we did. But we don't all, we, before that, we hadn't always. But we do now. But, that's kind of you know, how our, we did our videos. Okay, so in 1968, my parents bought a piece of land in New Mexico, two acres, they paid $2,500 for it. And it is now worth $165. After all that time. <laughs> and my, parents, my, my dad was so embarrassed about the scam, he never went out to see the land. Nobody in the family ever saw the land. So he said, we're gonna be in New Mexico, let's go see the family land scam. So we make a video about it, okay? And we did two very Don't. bad, Dumb thing. Yes. A, we pronounce the name of the town wrong. Yes. B E L E N is not Bellin. It's, it's Ballin. It's Ballin. We had a dime for every person that told us that we mispronounced the name of the town. Right. And then we also made it. It was a, intended to be a joke of a video. We're like. It was you know, not a documentary. It was a tongue <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was it was in cheek it was video. Tongue, it was meant to amuse the family. Right. Because it was a family land joke. So we heard some gunshots going off. I'm like, ooh, gunshots. I wonder what that's all about. Or we saw and I, like a little compound. And we, we just played it deadpan. Like, oh, I don't think they're shooting at us. <laughs> Everybody thought we were serious. Yes. So what happened was with YouTube. So with YouTube, it's all about the algorithm. And some people will yeah. pretend to say they know what the algorithm is. But all of a sudden, so this video is about a year old. And we had about how many views? Um, a thousand? Yeah, something like something that. Something like a thousand views after yeah. a year. And all of a sudden, Cindy's like, holy crap, the Landscam video just got 10,000 views today. Yes. And the next day, it got 20,000 yes. views. Wow. And then 20,000 and yes. 30,000 yes. views. And all of a sudden, within like five days, we had over 100,000 views, views on this one-year-old video. Right. 
and that was good. And it's got what about 155,000 yeah, views. So, and for us, that's really good. That's awesome. <laughs> but the problem that it had for us was that because YouTube promoted it, it went outside our genre of people. Um, people. So our viewers are super nice. Yes. Air streamers are super nice. Right. People on the internet are not nice. Yes. <laughs> okay? And we got, we got some of the most hateful comments about you city slickers, go back east, I don't want you out here. Blah, 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 yeah. blah. There Rich could not change a tire if his life depended on it. Yeah. So you know, well, he's <laughs> judgmental. All the, yeah, very, it was just mean. Right. And so we actually had to enlist my sister, who has a very last name, right. as what's called a flying monkey. And she would go out there and slam these people who would make mean comments and stuff like this because we don't want to do that, but they were just so mean. My sister would then say, do you really realize that these people probably are just trying to make a fun video? You know, and she would do stuff like that. So. You know, they, the ones about go back to your big city. Well, we live in Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> go, back, go back east, you city slippers. I live on a dirt road. In Vermont, in yeah. Vermont. <laughs> so that was a video that surprised us. Yes. Yeah. How many people have seen me and Daniel freeze our butts off in Texas? Yeah. Okay, because I don't want to bore you with this story if you've already seen it. We've got another one now. Oh, you want to talk about a different one? Because that one's the... Oh, okay, but then I'll give you this one. Okay, this one is... Uh, everybody wants a viral video for lots of reasons, right? For, first of which, you can build your subscribers, you can increase your impact, you know? So if you have a mission, you can amplify that mission if you have more people watching your videos. So that's really always, like, it's always been a goal of ours to have something to go viral. Um, and we thought we had it, right? So... You know how much work, Randy just talked about it, goes into a video. And we had a video that we thought was the most entertaining video walkthrough of a 2021 classic. And it was one of the first ones out there. Um, it launched and we were like glued to the TV and we were watching the metrics and we were like, oh my gosh, like 10,000 views in like an hour or two, right? And we were like, yes, this is going to be the video, right? And then you know what happened? Super Bowl happened. Oh. We, <laughs> we didn't account for launching a video on Super Bowl Sunday. And because we had a cadence, we always launch on Super Bowl Sunday, or on oh, Sundays. Sunday. And when it launched, we were like, this is going to hit 100,000, a million, a trillion. I don't even know. It's never going to stop. <laughs> and then the Super Bowl came on, and everybody got off of YouTube. And our, literally, our analytics went from like 10,000 to like zero. Like literally nobody was watching TV at that time. And like, to Rich's point, Google has an algorithm, right? Well, Google didn't account for the Super Bowl because they absolutely crushed that video, and it fell into a deep abyss and never came back, even though it was probably one of our greatest videos. The happy ending to this is that I'm from Tampa Bay, and we won the Super Bowl, so... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. With, with That's the happy with ending. Our, with our, yeah, with our quarterback, you won the Super Bowl. Yes. this <laughs> All right. So now that we we wanted to just cover those as like a top three kind of questions for, and then open it up to you guys. What things do y'all want to know and hear from us? Yep. Oh, there's one in the back. Yes, sir. Um, I, I want to go back to the um, the meanness of the internet. And so I'm just wondering. I mean, you said you had uh, your uh, a relative uh, respond. I mean, don't you really just have to learn to ignore that stuff entirely? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and here's, here's the deal with that is that when you first start off, when you first start off, I was crushed yeah. when I'd get that first bad comment that somebody would be like, you know, dude, really, you know, this was not, this was useless or something like that. Or somebody would sit there and say, you did it wrong or something like that. And I was crushed. Mm -hmm. Or, or when, we, when the subscriber count was really low, and would have like 275 subscribers and would check it the next day and it was 274. I'm like, what did I do to lose somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody actually clicked unsubscribe, what did I do? <laughs> and, and so when you first start off, you get that. Now, actually it was my sister that volunteered to do that because she really wants, she, that's just her personality. Right. She likes she, getting she in likes there. She likes doing that. And she likes doing it. We didn't it's, actually it's have to enlist her. her. Well, I mean, that, that's part of the uh, living in this space is just yes. Yes. realizing yes. that and, yes. you can't take it personally, right? 100%. And I would also say for us, can everybody hear me? Yeah. I'm usually so loud. 
Um, so one of the things that we decided early on, uh, thankfully we had had some experience because we own our own business with what it's like to get some feedback that's not so nice maybe on like glass door from an employee who you fired, might not like you so much. So we had some experience with that before we started and one of the things that we decided early on is that every comment is a gift, right? Because not only is it feedback, whether valid or not, it's also telling the algorithm that someone took the time to watch your video and comment on it. So therefore, um, it's really adding to what you're trying to do in general. So what we started doing, and I have to do this, Daniel doesn't like to do this, as I'll go into the comments that are really over the top, and there are those, um, and I'll say, you know, we're not everybody's cup of tea, but we appreciate get you giving us a shot. Hope you have an awesome day, you know? And it's just like, <laughs> sunshine is like crazy. Because, I mean, what else do you do? You're not going to change their mind if they don't like your voice, your face, your whatever it is. Like, you can't do anything about it. But now, you gave me a comment, and I added one. So, yeah. women. And, 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 <laughs> and honestly, some of the people that have left mean comments have become some of our greatest followers. You would be surprised. Yeah. Because Lauren followed up with some kindness in return, and it became, like, they, they sort of talked about why they left that comment originally and had some justification for it. And then really, like, some of those same people are still commenting today now, yeah. which is surprising. So we don't really, if somebody leaves a bad comment, it just, it, it is what You it have is. to assume I mean, yeah. positive intent even That's in it. the assume weirdest thing. Intent. That's exactly right. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. Yes, sir. I've been an avid follow of yours since this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man. But um, <laughs> how, how do you deal with her having such great personality on screen and then your personality? Right. Well, um, the reality is I get really good with the camera so that I can stay behind the camera. And then I just put her front and center. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I'll get you. I'll give you some negative feeds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, just, I just let her shine and I just try to be in, you know, in the ambient light. East joke. <laughs> no, no, I know. <laughs> well, I, I walked with him back and forth to the park a few times. He's in hockey land talking to him. Yeah. Said, I appreciate you looking at me. No, we didn't. <laughs> That's one of the things too though, right? I think, especially with the crew that's up here, yeah. um, the people who are on YouTube are just like anybody who's not on YouTube. <laughs> We're just normal people. Um, we just are really weird and having to carry a lot of cameras around and like spend time like rehashing our lives. Um, so, you know, it's, it's fun and we really do it because we enjoy it and that's cool. I'm an equipment junkie, so I'm interested. You said you had a workhorse camera. What's that and what do you uh, gimbals, drones, and lighting. So this is our workhorse camera. This is a Canon M6 with a, um, a microphone with the wind uh, muff on it. And we do use when we're filming like a stabilizer, a gimbal stabilizer that, that helps keep things stable so that you don't get that herky-jerky. Especially if you're doing movement. shots when you're walking. Yeah. yeah. Right. So the gimbal stabilizer helps do that. We use this for lighting. This is just our little... Um, It's like light. Yeah. yeah. It's like light. We use a for especially for like underwater shots. I have a GoPro with the little foam thing so that if it falls into the water. And then my, my drone that I use um, is this little guy, so that I can fold them up and throw them into a backpack or even even practically in my pocket, in pocket where it can fit. And the camera on this is spectacular. And so um, you know that's kind of. Yeah. Kind of our setup, but you know, if ever somebody's thinking about using doing YouTube, the first half of our videos were filmed on a cell phone. Yeah. And you don't have to have all this stuff. Right. Right. Just yeah. grab a cell phone. We've got a stabilizer for this that I didn't bring, but you can do videos with that stuff. And a lot. Yeah. Of, I would say almost every YouTuber practically starts off right. with a cell phone. Yep. And that's how they start. This camera back here is is my workhorse camera. It's my first camera I, I bought for doing YouTube. It's 4K. It's got image stabilization built into the lens, so if I hand hold it, it doesn't get shaky. It runs for over two and a half hours on a battery. So it, to me, that's I can run all day on that camera and not have to worry about running, have a dead battery. Usually I just swap them every morning. Um, one thing I learned real kind of quick in this, when you buy cameras, buy the extended warranty. Because <laughs> I dropped that, and it was broke for six months. Um, I sent it to get it repaired, it came back, it was broke. Went back and I had to get another camera. So I bought this camera, which is really nice. 
It's compact. It's just it's like a point and shoot camera. It's a little bit more on the higher end. It looks it expensive, but it, it's nice because I can carry it with me and I don't look like I'm a YouTuber all the time. So if we go some touristy places, I might grab this one or it's always on the dash of my truck. Um, we can shoot out the windows. But I dropped this one too. <laughs> Under warranty, got it repaired, had to buy another camera. So I bought the camera that's on the tripod back there, and that's uh, a little more high end. It's a mirrorless camera, um, three, uh, crop uh, sensor on it, but it, it's, a, it's a very nice camera. The problem with that, to me with that camera, I do put it on a gimbal like um, Rich is there. Uh, the problem for me with that camera, it's heavy, and then the stabilization isn't as good. So if you see me using a camera, it's on the gimbal most of the time. Or it's on a tripod because I don't, I can't walk with it and it get a really good picture. Feels being yeah, no, no, no. I did drop that one too. <laughs> I dropped that one uh, last spring, and it was so so it, the tripod tipped over, and it was so badly damaged that uh, Best Buy gave, gave me my money back and said, "Go buy another camera." <laughs> yeah. It's a win for the warranty. So yeah. yeah. So I those are my those are my basically my three cameras. I have some GoPros that I mount on my truck. I put some GoPro mounts on the mirrors on the outside of the truck that I can do driving shots. I do have a dash cam that we bought after a truck was robbed, so we can have video the next time someone robs their truck, so we can do a better video. <laughs> <laughs> Get them breaking in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so I ha I have that for footage out the front. Um, I have a drone. But I'm not allowed to fly it anymore because now that my videos are being monetized, I have to have a license to fly the drone, or I could potentially have a hundred thousand dollar fine. I'm not making a hundred thousand dollars on YouTube yet, so I can't afford that. So my drone is is grounded until I get my license. But that, that's kind of run over my videos. Question for you: yeah. the camera here on the table, that little camera you just said yeah. you put in your pocket, um, what's the video quality of that? And then also what's the this, this is a Sony, it's an RX100. Um, the nice thing about this camera, it has a microphone input on it. Um, it is a one inch sensor. It actually has a larger sensor than that camera over there. Um, so it's kind of in between that camera and that camera. Uh, it, it's got awesome focusing. They, basically, Sony took their most expensive software and threw it in their smallest camera. And it's really nice. And they actually have a model of this camera that's designed for video. It's a little bit different. It has a swing out on the side viewfinder, and it's a little bit less expensive. It's actually better if you're going to do YouTube channels. Um, I'd recommend that one over this one. But this is also good for, it's got a really good <coughs> zoom lens on it. It's good for pictures and such, too. So video quality is really, really good. It's, four, it's 4K. These three. Yeah. yeah, all my cameras are 4K. And that was one of the things that when I got into this, I wanted to make sure I, I started with 4K because, again, YouTube algorithms, if you're not shooting in 4K, they may not recommend your video as much as a 4K video because they want to promote how neat their pictures look, you know, their videos look on their uh, format. So yeah. I like this. The other thing I would I would recommend is sound. Mm -hmm. Good microphones. Yes. Yes. Um, we have two microphones sitting here. They're actually wireless and they're connected back to that camera. It's a new something new for us, but we can clip those uh, microphones on us and walk around without being tied up to a cord. So it's a new a new level of what we're adding to our, our stuff. It was my first YouTube check. <laughs> yeah. She would, yeah. Uh, you mentioned about not making money. Can you make money doing this? Uh, there, yeah. There's a guy oh, called yeah. Mr. Beast who, yeah. is, who is going to be the world's first YouTube billionaire. Yeah. He is on pace to become the first YouTube billionaire. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Beast. B billion with a B. With a B. Yeah. But, Go ahead. But yes. does anyone yeah. know who the highest grossing YouTuber is for 2020? What he does? Yeah, the Ryan Kaji. Yeah. yeah. He's a nine year old kid that opens up toys and reviews the toys that his parents buy him. Last year yeah. he made twenty five point nine million dollars <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> As a nine year old kid opening toys. Mr. Beast was number two. Yeah. Behind yeah. Ryan. Yeah. To, to give you an no. idea where <laughs> where the money is in this for us, probably and I'm sure it may be a little bit different for each of us, but on mine. If I get a thousand views on my video, I might get nine dollars. Yeah, it's about a half penny per yeah. view. So that gives you an idea of where we're at. So if you look at someone's videos and you look at how many views on them, and it, it, it varies on what type of videos they are, because they pay more. It's all in advertising, mm -hmm. you know. And if the advertisers want to advertise on a particular type of video, and I think travel videos are on the lower end. 
Um, automotive videos are on the higher end, so they probably get more money. Um, but it's whatever the tr they want to pay for that, we get, I think it's roughly 50% of that. Um, so and, and we're, we're not making money. <laughs> and what question we get, do we get to select the ads? Like, do we get, so if you see oh, like one of our question. videos and you see like a Chevrolet ad and we're driving a Ford, you're like, why are they doing that? Right. YouTube selects the ads. And if it's for lingerie, it may mean because you've looked at some lingerie videos. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> and it's retargeting you. That is not us. <laughs> That's the way the algorithm works. Along that same line, I was going to ask, how do you afford what you're doing? Because campgrounds, when we were traveling, they could be under $25. And we stayed at national parks and state parks a lot. Corps of Engineer were some of our very favorite. And they were very reasonable, and we were living on an Army retirement. Yeah. But now, campgrounds can be $50, $75. Mm -hmm. How do you afford what you're doing? We sold absolutely everything we owned three years ago three and a half years ago. I mean, the house, the big fancy cars, the everything. And before that, we uh, launched a business that was an overnight success. It just, it only took us 12 years. So, <laughs> and that allowed us to put in place some middle management and allowed us some freedoms. But basically, since we don't have a mortgage, a lawn bill, a pool bill, a cable bill, and everything else bill, the campground expenses are our only expenses. We would love to boondock more, obviously, because that would reduce, reduce some expenses, but uh, that's how we're able to afford what we do. Um, and Peter, we still work full time with that business on the road. That's so right. yep. we, we invented a little widget that I'm yeah. sure everybody you have in your home and we made a fortune off of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, we're, we're just like the rest of you guys. I mean, we, we worked a nine to five job for 30, 40 years and saved our money and knew we, we wanted to do something like this. We wanted to try, we were going to do the travel anyway. So. We just saved our money to do that. Yeah, and same, same with us. So, you know, my factory all of a sudden closed, and I was like, oh, what, what do we do now? We start, and the one thing we've heard is when people travel full time or sail full time or whatever, and you ask them what they would do differently, almost nobody says they would do it later in life. Everybody says yeah. they would do it earlier in life. So, even though we were early and not of retirement age, we ran some numbers, we saved as well. Yes. And we're like, we can always go back to work. We're never going to be healthier than we are at this moment. We're never going to be whatever. So let's just go ahead and do this. So we're early retired. We do yep. this on our own. Uh, we, yeah. we're, we call ourselves part-time full-timers that we go out for three months. We still have a house in Vermont, so we go back to that. Mm -hmm. And then we go out for a couple months and have a lot of fun. We've got two. Let's go one in the back real quick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, National Park Service uh, has uh, loosened up the restrictions about filming. But you go and you say, you know, I want to I shoot this, you know, like whatever event. How constrained are you by the, you know, getting uh, treaty uh, authorization and stuff like that to shoot at that place? I'll very quickly speak to that. Uh, because we'll both have an FAA license to fly the drone, which is required, it's the Part 107 license. Um, you, There are certain areas where you can apply for uh, clearance up to a certain feet, like 100 feet, 200 feet, up to 400 feet is typically the cap. Um, national parks, it doesn't really matter what we do, what we request, unless you pay, they have a uh, specific, basically the answer is you're probably never going to find a national park unless you're like a commercial studio with lots of money yeah. because yeah. it's just, they just charge these exorbitant amounts of money to shoot national parks and it's just not ever going to happen. Honestly, we can shoot with handheld cameras, you can't use a tripod and you can't use a mounted light, I think, that makes it professional or something to that. Yeah. It's something, there's yeah. some specifics to that, but those are some guidelines that we have to adhere to. But from a standpoint yeah. of like overall, that's probably one of the weirdest parts about starting a YouTube channel is getting used to people seeing a camera attached <laughs> to you. Um, and the more, your, or the he yeah. heavier equipment, like this is the camera that we would normally walk into. We look like a spectacle. Right. Like, why do we have a small animal on top of our camera? Yeah. <laughs> this is a question we get all the time. Right. So you ball. kind of just get used to people kind of staring and looking at you kind of weird um, and get over it. But then there are people, like we've been in experiences where we've been in campgrounds and Daniel had clearance from you know all FAA, the appropriate yeah. authorities to fly the drone, but someone will come up to us screaming and yelling and being like, that's illegal. And you know, you just, do your best to, you I know. I got a vest now? <laughs> yeah, just, uh, oh, just so everybody can see. Just so everybody knows. Um, um, 
But you just try to do it. So everybody knows. I, I googled how to keep people from harassing you when you're flying a drone, and like this showed up, and I'm like, I'm ordering that. <laughs> So you just do your best to be respectful. Okay. If someone really has a problem with us flying our drone in the campground, I I typically am the person who will jump in and tell her, you know, ma'am, we're we've got the authorization, but because you're uncomfortable, we're happy to bring it down, but it will take us a couple minutes. Can you give us that? I fly my drone with this occasionally too. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a little thing. You might have never seen our videos, but he's there. You just never see him. Yep. He's in some a lot of the videos. So there are places like some grocery stores will tell you you can't film. Like management will come up and tell you, and then yeah. you just respect what people's wishes are and figure out something else to film. Yeah. Right. Exactly. When we did the little film that we did on the blueberry hut, they had a sign yeah. that said they didn't want anybody filming or taking pictures, and so we try to be respectful for that. Yeah. Um, when we did the Dimple Sandwich Museum, because of the Smithsonian's rules regarding monetizing anything that they have in an exhibit, we couldn't okay. actually film the sandwich machine, and that was on loan to this little small museum. Yeah. And especially with people, we're very respectful. We don't yeah. film them unless, you know, with, with their full face and all that, you know, unless we ask them first if they want to be on camera. And I think you guys would all agree, from the drone, everybody looks like dots. So yeah. we're not yeah. uh, and there, there is a cool app that yeah. you can, from the FAA, that'll tell you if you can fly based upon airspace requirements and stuff. So I always check that yeah. before you fly from the FAA, it says, yes, you're in a controlled airspace, or we were in a military operations area once yeah. Yeah. that we had to worry about. So. I think for us, because we have YouTube channels and we're building brands, we have to be extra super yeah. sensitive to everything <laughs> and everyone. Um, so if you're not monetized on YouTube, you definitely have more flexibility, I would say, yeah. than we would. We just have to be super sensitive because of that kind of thing. Wait, and I'll be yeah. wearing the vest, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did the cooking. You do the cooking videos. Mm -hmm. Do you have any trouble with uh, product? Uh, that you use, or do you just sort of keep it? Uh, well, I'm not the word I'm looking for. I can't find it. But uh, endorsements. Yeah, it's not endorsements, but do you keep it sort of plain? Just this is flour. This is just curious about that. Yeah, I, I don't really try to advertise any particular product. You know, I do have my favorites, but I don't go out of my way to just say this is what I use and this is what someone should use. So I, I don't think I uh, focus on that at all. Okay. Yeah. See, another I, question? Yeah. <laughs> when you go filming and you're walking maybe like down the streets of Nashville and you're passing a lot of people, yeah. do you have to stop and get their permission to, to get on YouTube or do you just uh, collateral damage. Kind of collateral damage. So most people, most people who are really opposed to a camera will avoid you because you're. Oh, they think you're, cross you're the street look weird. And get away from you. Um, so we haven't had too much trouble just in like random public areas. Um, but a lot of our shots when we're walking on the street are so zoomed in that, and we because of the lens we have, it also it, it blurs out a little bit of the background as well. Yeah. So we've got that going for us. But we're also cognizant of the angles we're using as well. I think probably we all are to yeah. some extent. So like I always look for a way to position Lauren so that she's like facing something that doesn't have a lot of people sometimes as well. Yeah. yeah. That's a great, great, great question. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So I, I just want to ask if any of you besides Rich and Cindy have a serial photo bar. <laughs> <laughs> We have been photobombed on occasion yes. by certain individuals. By certain individuals. But we do get photobombed. We do. Do you? We'll, we'll, we'll do watch back our videos so and we'll, like, we'll have no idea and somebody will be like jumping up. And, <laughs> and, and we think that's oh, funny. And we won't notice it until we look at the film later. <laughs> it's hilarious. We're doing like a yeah. selfie or something and we won't notice it until later. And we're like, oh, there he is. Have you all had that issue? I've seen people wander through, you know, as I'm filming, walk by and wave. And I love that. I can't leave that in the video. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool, you know. It's interaction. But yeah. I haven't we, had a photo bomber like that. Our only photo bomber was a baby hippo. Bomber. Yeah. Yeah, who tried to kiss Lauren. We got it behind this. We got it behind the scenes toward the Cincinnati Zoo, and the baby hippo like climbed up on the edge of the thing. enclosure. Fiona, and she tried. I was like, oh my gosh, Lauren, like. Hippos kill people. Like I was like, <laughs> to grab her, like it's a baby hippo, but it can still kill you. And it got so close to her head. It was, but it's a cutest little. It was a little. 
It was a little. <laughs> Cutest little 600 pound baby. Yeah. Really. yeah. <laughs> For real. Do we have another question right here? Yes, ma'am. I'm just wondering, do you ever consciously turn the cameras off like one day a week? You don't film? You right? You guys. Yeah. yeah, we don't film every day. Right? No. Yeah. We, we typically, our travel style is, you know, we like to get some place and spend a week. And in that week, if we're doing something, we take the cameras with us. And, you know, we always take a camera with us. But yeah. we don't always film. Um, we do take days. And a lot of times, it's the first couple of days we get someplace. We want to get a feel for it. You know, what, what's going on? We don't, we're not good researchers. We don't go and look at everything we no. do. We kind of get someplace and we, we kind of stumble across things and like that. But we always take some days off. And then there's always a, an editing day that, you know, we've got to kind of work in that week. So we're, we're probably only filming maybe two days a week. If, you know, we find some things we want to do, right. we do it. I, we're probably all like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah. Say, I would, yeah. I would say, say so. You know, there are some YouTubers that do release videos every single day. That yeah. would be they're, on the, they're pacing for a billion, though, so it's a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That would be insane. We, we upload once a week. We do once a week. And, and we'll do an occasional short, you know, every Tuesday. So we want to thank you all yes. for, yeah. for coming and watching our videos and um, Zephyr Travels and Wander Local. I know we watch their videos. Yeah, we Love do. Them. Yeah. Um, and we want to thank you for coming today and sharing our experiences. And like I said, we'll hang out here for a little bit if you yeah. want to say anything else. And to Rich's point, yeah. Thank you.